Welcome to Concussion Talk Podcast. I'm Mick Mercer, and as always, follow me on social media, so Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Concussion Talk. My website is concussiontalk.com. And this episode, 133, I'm Dr. Dr. James Van Lanningham. I hope I'm saying that correctly, correctly. That's enough pronunciation on the right syllable. It's a long last name, but uh, Oh um, yeah, but we're gonna actually I guess actually first I should just introduce my sponsor, thank my thank Head to Health for sponsoring me. So if I remember this correctly, Head to Health bridges the gaps in concussion care through simple, powerful technology. To run organizations like the Canadian Football League, Track Factory Racing, the Canadian Junior Hockey League, Eastern Washington University, and Volleyball Canada to rely on Hedge Health to, to improve communication. Optimize, optimize care. Visit hedgehealth.com for more. So that's, I should, I, I have recorded that. that I'm doing this a lot on, on YouTube, on video now too. I got to kind of say it. And uh, I'm kind of sorry I'm over speaking of it, but there it is. It's part of the energy. And then, but first, so Dr. Dr. Van Lanning, I'm not saying that correctly. You're doing and, good, Nick. It's and, a uh, well, welcome to the show. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having me. Thanks and for I having me. You have a very interesting background, so I'll, we'll get that in a second. But first, I guess, was get you a, give a brief, brief overview of the uh, the new treatment you have for concussion that's in, de- in development, the treatment for that you and, o- and Odyssey Health have in development for concussion. Right, right. Well, Nick, thanks for having us today. And um, yeah, I'm the uh, VP of Drug Development for Odyssey Health. And Odyssey Health is... Uh, got the first drug that's in human trials to try to acutely treat concussion. Uh, We obviously know that um, multiple concussions can lead to long-term consequences, but just a single concussion can result in what's known as post-concussion syndrome. And that's when you're having symptoms uh, 90 days days post-injury and and further out for months or years. And, and that's what we're trying to, to be able to treat acutely to really get a hold and reduce the percentage of folks that end up with post-concussion syndrome. When, when you're developing a drug, Nick, um, you know, it's, it ends up being so much more than just does the drug work or does it not? You've got to obviously give, you believe in the mechanism of the drug, you know, our drugs and neurosteroid, it reduces inflammation, oxidative stress, and and all these different types of things that are pathologically going wrong in the brain. But then we've got to think about it. We've got to be able to treat this disorder immediately so you don't get all the secondary damage associated with the brain injury. So you can try to reset reset that brain earlier so people don't get frustrated and get depression or get frustrated and get anxiety and stuff like that. So by attacking it early, we believe we needed to create a protocol that fit that. Um, and what we did was we, we got the drug and we put it in a spray dried formulation, meaning a powder formulation. Yeah. yeah. And, we, and we developed our own dual airflow intranasal device. So oh. you actually, the drug goes in the device. And if you're conscious, you can blow the drug. So you blow from the mouth through the air through the device up into the nose. And that disperses the powder drug deep into the nasal cavity where it can track along the olfactory neuron, the neuron that you use to smell, to sense smell, directly into the brain in minutes and diffuses throughout the brain in less than 30 minutes. So in in an acute situation, you want something that's gonna get there fast and you want it to be something in this case, since there's so many out in the field, head injuries, concussions, whether it be sports or military, whatever, you know, that we know about, uh, we want to be able to be able to deliver it in the field. Well, it's hot outside. We were just talking before the yeah, show about how hot it is in Florida right now. Yeah. If I've got a high school kid down the road who's got a concussion and my drug isn't heat stable, this drug's useless. So we know that in the field, treatment in the acute setting is what's going to be needed for this. So by putting it in a spray dried formulation, that spray dried formula is stable at very high temperatures. By putting it in an intranasal device, that's a lightweight device that can be easily carried by an athletic trainer or medic or EMT. uh, And it uh, can be used to blow 
Uh, there's a bulb system too, but to blow and get it into the brain very quickly. The other important thing that when you're talking about developing drugs is safety, right? We always, we yeah. all want these commercials in there. Hey, this will help you with diabetes, but it yeah. may do this, 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 yeah. and that, you know, scare the crap out of us, um, is we've got to make sure this drug is safe. And by giving it nasally and having most of it go to the brain, that means that the formula is not going to other parts of the body. So yeah. we have less concern about side effects with this type of delivery mechanism as well. So all that to get around is how does the drug work? The drug works through gene amplification and it stimulates the production of three valuable proteins. One protein reduces inflammation in the brain. The second protein reduces oxidative stress in the brain. And the third protein reduces swelling and functions to help clean up cellular debris that is mucking up the damaged cell. So we've got one cell, I mean, one drug working like a cocktail of drugs at multiple pathological levels. We're getting it there fast. It's heat stable, so it's a good field deliverable. And we've gone through phase one and it's been safe and patients and um, we're moving on now to more of the efficacy studies here in the coming months. Excellent, excellent. So uh, actually, because you're, you're a perfect person to do it, you developed this drug first and then us helped acquire the drug and, and you to manage the research. I read, in the, read this all on us Health's homepage, your bio. On the, right. And uh, also, I'm fascinated by the bio you did. You actually have a PhD in, molecular, in behavioral neuro, molecular, molecular neuroscience. So is that right? Yeah, my PhD is in molecular and, neuroscience. Uh, right, right. And you, and you also worked as a physical therapist and uh, treating, treating MSC children. And uh, and also you 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 suffered own severe brain injury like I did. I, I was a brain, severe brain injury as well. So just talk, talk just about your, just say it's your, your background, how you got into why neuroscience, why PhD, and boom, why physical therapy, and what happened to your brain injury. It's a long, long bunch of questions, but you know. Well, ironically, I was the proverbial jock in high school where all I cared about was sports. I yeah. still made, I made fine grades, but I mean, I was really focused on sports and I thought, and, and, I, and I, give, I give this piece of advice to kids that are in, that are in high school uh, and even in middle school is to create a plan. Decide something you think you may be interested in and learn what it's going to take to get to accomplish that. When I was probably a junior in high school, I said, you know what, I'm a sports guy, I'm gonna be a physical therapist. And I just sort of said, I'm gonna work on people's knees and shoulders. And one day I'm gonna be the physical therapist for the Atlanta Falcons. That was my dream, right? So when I got out of high school, that was my dream. And I'm so- not, I, I'm not Tampa Bay or, or Miami Dolphins. No, 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 I don't know why it was the Falcons at the time. But <laughs> anyway, but, and, and that's what I, I was, organized to do that. I didn't waste time in college like so many people do. And, and I accomplished that. And when, But by the time I got out of physical therapy school, all I cared about was neuroscience. And one of the reasons was, is before I got in and went through PT school, I had my own brain injury. So I was, uh, I, was okay. down in, I, I was down in Gainesville, Florida, and uh, my older brother had just got in med school and a bunch of friends had caravan down there and moved a bunch of his stuff and checked him into his new apartment and uh we all went out to dinner and I walked out of a restaurant and there was a, a vagrant never met man in my life and he blindsided me and I hit my head on the curb and had three major subdural bleeds Gee. um and so I had uh yeah so when I got you know that was tough I was in ICU for quite some time and um, was actually put on a neurosteroid uh, that helped keep me from having to have blood shunted off of my brain, uh, which I still give credit to that neurosteroid, at least in some part, to saving my life. But um, I went on from there and I had amnesia for about 18 months. Um, and it's the short-term amnesia that so many people with concussion get. Uh, and you're probably familiar with it too, Nick. You know, where did I put my keys? Or, you know, what did I read 10 minutes ago? So when, when I finally, I, I went back to physical therapy school, I learned a valuable lesson. And I was trying to tell kids this too, still to this day, is if you want to be successful, if you want to separate yourself from the crowd, if you want to move up the ladder, the way I did it 
I was forced to because of my brain injury, but it, I, I kept this quality, which was when everybody else reads it once, you read it twice. If they'll read it once, you commit to reading it twice and you'll separate yourself um, in, in the competitive landscape of, of jobs and careers and stuff like that in, in our country. But um, <clears throat> from there, I went, uh, I went on and worked with brain injured kids. I was in love with brain neuroscience stuff, partly because of what had happened to me. I worked with kids that had brain injury in and around the time of birth, a lot of cerebral palsy, a lot of uh, uh, intracranial uh, hemorrhaging in and around the time of birth, uh, dealt with developmental delays, worked with the school systems uh, pretty closely. And um, I, I enjoyed that, uh, but I felt like I... I wasn't done. I don't even know how to explain yeah. that. Yeah. And I, yeah. And uh, so I, I applied to go back and get my PhD in molecular neuroscience, was fortunate enough to get paired with a brilliant, wonderful uh, principal investigator, Dr. Kathy Levinson. And we focused most of my PhD work was on micronutrients, which is trace metals. Okay. And looking at the effects of dietary zinc, copper, and dietary iron on neurodegenerative disorders like yeah. Parkinson's and yeah. Alzheimer's disease. But towards the end, in the last, I don't know, year and a half of my PhD, we created a traumatic brain injury model in animals at the research facility at, at Florida State. And we got our first paper published together uh, on, uh, off of that injury model. And I parlayed that into uh, a postdoc at Emory in Atlanta in neurobehavioral and emergency medicine and got involved in clinical trials for severe brain injury using intravenous progesterone. Uh, and that was really just to save folks' lives, kind of like us when we had our severe and we may have got on the steroid. Progesterone was a neurosteroid that we had done a lot of animal work with uh, to show that it was neuroprotective. So, um, so I worked on that for a while and then came back and got the, started working with the med school here at FSU in Tallahassee and started developing my own drugs. And, and one of those drugs is the drug that is now entering a soon enter phase two trials with Odyssey Health. Wow. So you, that's, you, it's even more interesting than your, your bio. You should have your bio on the, on the homepage there. Cause that's just <laughs> fascinating stuff. But uh, other bio is fascinating anyway, but yeah, you have to keep short. I don't know, but uh, yeah, so, so you were talking about neurosteroids and uh, progesterone. So is this neuros, I know there's neurosteroid in the uh, in the drugs and development. Um, is there, is that a form as well? Or is that, or is that like basically define what is neurosteroid? Right, so that's a good question. I mean, a lot of people, don't, vitamin D is a neurosteroid. So anytime yeah. you have, a, if you have something that has a, in simple terms, a cholesterol backbone, you can build carbons off of that cholesterol backbone and create what is known as a, as a steroid. Yeah. If it has a, an effect and it's found within the nervous system, it's then a neurosteroid. So vitamin D, we know that's in our bodies and our bones, but once yeah. vitamin D is also available to the brain, within the brain, vitamin D then functions as a neurosteroid. We know progesterone and helping with fertility and maintaining pregnancy, that that's a systemic hormone for for you know having a child right for developing yeah. a fetus yeah progesterone also is available to the brain and at that point it's classified as a neurosteroid so the key to neurosteroids and what makes neurosteroids a viable treatment option in general for any brain disorder is that they are lipophilic lipophilic I Lipo love, I love fat. fat right that means they love fat yeah. So the brain is mainly fat, right? There's a lot yeah. of membrane in the brain. So the brain being fat loves other fat. So if your drug is fat loving, it's gonna get it's gonna easily get into the brain and have an effect. But we could give our drug any way you want it to, and some of it would get to the brain, but still targeting it, targeting it to the brain through breath propulsion and using the your sense of smell to drive the drug into the brain is still important for getting most of it there. Instead of having that drug go through the liver, if you give it orally or IV and getting degraded in the liver and losing yeah. a lot of the drug, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Potency goes down if you give it any other way but by yeah. way of the nose. 
Yeah, like a pill or like an injection. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Okay, so as I said, I read this also in on your in in the bio there that you also did a lot of research into uh, enantiomers. So mm -hmm. can you explain what those are, people? I I, I was sorry, I look, looked up myself, but I also right. I, well, I, now it's it's it's, it's quite it's a great question. Uh, and not to get into too much of the complexity of organic chemistry, yeah. or organic meaning we're dealing with a bunch of carbons and, and yeah. living stuff, but- <clears throat> I did already came in the enantiomer, Right, and enantiomer is the mirror image, right? So I have a right hand and I have a left hand. They're yeah. the mirror image of each other. Yeah. But my right hand can do things the way it's chirally or the way it's organized with the oh, fingers okay. different than my left. They do a lot of similar things. The fingers yeah. are the same, but the but thumbs the, are pointing in different directions. It's a, it ends up being a major difference. Yeah, that ends up being a, a not a major difference, but a difference. So what is the what is going to happen with one doesn't can. necessarily happen at the same rate with the other. Yeah. So we have a, a, an enantiomer of of nineteen norprogesterone. So we have the mirror image. So if this is nineteen norprogesterone. We created the mirror image. And what that has allowed us to do is a couple of things. It's still effective, like I said, as a nerve protector, but with the thumb pointing this way, it's gonna interact with things less that may cause side effects, such as infertility or clotting, that this would have. So we created by doing the mirror image a safer molecule. The other thing is, this is your natural one. This is the natural enantiomer. Yeah. This is the, it's, counterpart that we've got here <laughs> this natural one the body's got things to break it down real quick <laughs> right yeah. it's used to it it's got to metabolize it quicker this yeah. one's a little different it takes longer to break it down and so it has a longer is. half life it stays in your body longer having a longer therapeutic effect so that, that's a why if you have it orally or if you have the same in pill form or by inject it it would be kicked out it would, live, it would stay in your body longer correct yeah. Yeah, uh, great. That's so. So you you did even done that for your this drug, didn't you? Said you just created your drug when you're at Emory, or did you? Were you saw patients? Did you saw me for this drug that's now and drug? It's, I would say is now development, but the drug that you created. So the drug, the drug that I that we've got here is a new yeah. chemical entity. Uh, it was I created this drug. And it what the asset was acquired by Odyssey Health, and Odyssey brought me on to continue to develop it. Yeah. Um, the this this drug has never been made before, but it has the the characteristics of a neurosteroid, and it's been through all the molecular and behavioral testing to suggest that it is it has superior qualities, specifically with cellular debris cleanup and as an antioxidant compared to other neurosteroids uh, effects in the brain. So when when you saw a need for this just in your clinical practice as a physical therapist uh, or, or as a or as a doing your Emory, your postdoc Emory? To be honest with you, I saw an, I saw a need for this for a, a couple of reasons. Um, one was I was seeing patients that have had concussions, about 20% of them that were having developing post-concussion syndrome at an even higher rate than I was seeing what I would classify as post-concussion syndrome, some of those symptoms in, in people who had more severe brain injuries. So the miserable minority of mild or concussion brain injury uh, and post-concussion syndrome is so long lasting that I felt like if we could treat acutely that we could try to stave or prevent that from happening. But there was a problem and there, it's a big problem between severe brain injury and, and mild concussion. Severe, you're trying to save somebody's life. You're yeah. not typically trying to save somebody's life that's out of concussion, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you have to create a, a, a treatment method is a little bit different. When trying to save somebody's life, you're trying to dump as much drug, no matter how harmful it is to save their lives in the first few days. But concussion needed to be managed for 14 days, 10 to 14 days, cause symptoms tend to wax and wane. So I had to create a safer drug molecule, a safer molecule. And that's why I created the enantiomer. 
because I knew that it would have less side effects. And that's the reasoning behind it. Okay, and so and so when you were, because I know when I'm talking to people that have concussion, which I do see do obviously do a lot in this podcast, I've noticed some similarities, but not like as you as you also have a severe injury that I did. So do you do have you noticed that there's like a similarities or differences between let's say come and say because someone has someone who has had a concussion, someone's had a severe brain injury. What are the do you find different symptoms are yes. completely different or do you find they're just very much the same? Just the holiday. A lot of it's a lot of it's the same. A lot of it's the same. I'll say the, the two major things that I see, no matter the no matter what degree of the injury. And this is in the portion of mild brain injuries, portion of concussions that don't get better, that, that develop post-concussion syndrome at 90 days out, that don't get better early. Yeah. Uh, is one is energy, the brain energy level. In other words, you can still think, you can still function for an hour or two, but after that, your thinking ability, your processing speed is significantly decreased and your symptoms exacerbate. So yeah. when you, you, you didn't have a headache, but two, hour, two hours of doing this, you do. Where two hours of writing, you got to quit. You can't even think anymore. Your brain is just mush versus you used to get to work eight straight hours. So the, the brain's function peters out with regards to thinking and, and thought processing quicker after a brain injury. And then the second thing that I see a lot of is for folks that aren't getting better and are developing post-concussion syndrome or, or folks that have more severe brain injury and are, are still working through the rehab is a lot of visual vestibular problems, a lot of problems with eye tracking. Uh, and, and when you're having problems with eye tracking, you're going to get headaches, you're going to get dizzy, but you're also going to not process as much of what you're going to, of what you're doing. In other words, if my eyes can't track from left to right when I'm reading something, I'm not digesting well what I'm reading and I'm rereading. So you see a lot of this, oh, what did I just reread? And people having to redo stuff. So the ability to cognitively function is deficient because of the repetitiveness needed uh, due to the visual vestibular component of the injury. Right. And uh, I was going to ask one thing, I think about the, the drug, this. Also, if you came on the, this to this company right after you created the, the prototype of the drug, I guess. Um, so, so how how far are you along in this? And also, also, I was actually last effort. How far along are you in this drug development? So, right now, we've enrolled. We we've we've gone through the enrollment of forty patients, and all forty patients have been given the drug either <clears throat> once at a low concentration or once at a high or for multiple consecutive days at low or high doses. And none of those patients have had any side effects or any significant issues with the drug. So we've confirmed the safety of the drug at these different concentrations. Now we are moving in to the, to, to the part that determines how well the drug is working. And what, what that will look like at first will be, we give this drug for 10 straight days. These individuals who've had a concussion that got the drug versus placebo, which is just a yeah. formula without the drug. The ones that got the drug will report less severe symptoms. And then we will look at 90 days out and we will compare and say that the ones that got the drug had a less percentage of post-concussion syndrome diagnoses. Right. Okay. And uh, so you're saying that those the one that the post concussion stuff. I saw an interview with you. You do with Brett Favre on a TV show, and uh, they're saying though so he's had. I uh, see he's had multiple concussions, but it's people and friend like I've had with severe brain injury. People have had who have had concussions in the past, few like you know few few months or even like longer. They they're, they're not. This is this is for acute drug, acute concussions. This is for treatment right away, right? Not for this is not for people who have brain injury or have concussions or currently have a post concussion syndrome or whatever. So it's for people. That's who are, correct. This is a this is to stop it going forward. This is to make it better going forward in the acute phase. 
The goal is to get this drug within six hours of the injury. That's the goal. And okay. to be able to manage with this drug with two treatments a day for 10 straight days. And that is the, the goal of that is to reduce the number of people that end up having long-term consequences from the injury. And also to be able to get folks back to work and back to school, back to play faster and safer. But yeah, so if you take Brett Favre and, and Brett's had multiple concussions, this is not a drug that's going to prevent him from okay. developing Alzheimer's disease or CTE or yeah. any form of dementia. That is not what this goal, the goal of this drug is. Now, there are, there are some other drugs that are out there that are, are trying to look into stuff like that, um, but not that's not what this is focused on. Well, that, that's, important, that's important for people to realize that there is like a, hopefully a treatment for, for, for immediacy for this acute phase of a after concussion, but if you're past the acute phase, I suggest you just get into so get in the hospital again to see a doctor if you can. And physiology, physical therapy, I think it's great. And there's lots of other treatments and just sort of any on your symptoms, I guess. But uh, also, um, so I just want to thank you so much for being doing this podcast. And if you had anything else to add about either drug or or the company or yourself, that you'd like to to talk about please let me know I, I, nick i appreciate you letting us let's letting us talk today I, I think that the company our our stock our ticker symbol is odyy if anybody's interested in um you know playing with it in the market and, and encouraging um promoting a need for a solution for concussion i think is key that's the messaging that that we all try to do is why do we just sit and wait? Why don't we go late, just lay down and, and hope we get better? We know up to 30% of people still have problems 90 days later. You know, it, it baffles me. You know, there, there's people out there that think, oh, well, concussion, it'll just get better. They all just get better. Yeah. There's no reason for truth. You know, and, and, and that's not true. But even if it were, you know, I've got a sinus, you know, I got a cold, you know, yeah. it's going to get better. But I'm still going to go take Sudafed or Dayquil today to handle the symptoms while I'm waiting for it to get better. So, so to me, that you know, those types of arguments fall flat. But you know, I just think it's time for a treatment solution. You know, you get all this, you know, all the money goes into helmets. You know, people know that they're still going to get concussions even if they got a helmet on. Your brain's going to slosh yeah. around inside your skull, um, oh, yeah. and there's just no way to prevent it. And um, but my real passion, and I think, you know, Brett Favre's real passion is to help the military. Um, we've got a great military board. Uh, Brand Baudet, uh, Paul Tulin, uh, Tim Shermansky, Jim Linder, these guys have been leaders of SOCOM, uh, former head of Navy SEALs, and they, they've seen it. They care about it. And, and I think that's what's important about Odyssey's team is everybody on the team has been affected by it. Uh, at, at some level. And you know what? That's not surprising because there's just a ton of it. You know, there's yeah. a ton of it. And, uh, you know, and it, it's it's going to happen. I mean, it's, it's it's just we need a treatment out there for it. So I'm going I'm to work until my time is is done on this earth. Uh, well, to find, find I wish you all the best. And that is that the time of the it's as you know, I feel it's a worthy cause, obviously. And uh, best of luck to you. And, uh, can anyone reach find well, I guess we'll find say the Aussie or your own website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, social media. It's Odyssey Health Inc. So odysseyhealthinc.com. It's a okay. good website. Uh there's a place to ask questions on there. I get questions all the time and I and I try to answer them as quick as I can. So go on there, check out the website. So it's a real good website. We actually just updated it, easy to navigate, cool stuff. Yeah. It is, and I actually and read the bottoms of it. There's all of their all of their uh, social media. So there's there's uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and um, I see anything else. Uh, social media. That, anyway, it's on the bottom of the page there. And there's Dr. Van Lendingham's bio. If you go to the management, the Meet the Team management, you can find out more about. And as you meet the team, sports advisory, military advisory, board directors, like there's lots of people to meet and a uh, big team. So again, thank you so much. And uh, I really hope to, to wish you all the best in your trade development and your career.
career out there. So thank you so much. Appreciate you, Nick. Take care, buddy. Thank See you. you. See you. Bye. Thanks, Nick. Thanks.